Well, as you all know, it's taken uh, many hours and many trips uh, to make possible the resumption of Israeli-Palestinian negotiations. And the negotiators are now en route to Washington, even as we speak here. And I will have more to say about the uh, journey to this moment and uh, what, what our hopes are uh, after our initial meetings conclude tomorrow. Uh, this effort began with President Obama's historic trip to Israel and Ramallah in March of this year. And without his commitment, without his conversations there, and without his engagement in this initiative, uh, we would not be here today. The President charged me directly with the responsibility to explore fully the possibility of resuming talks. And in our meetings with President Abbas and Prime Minister Netanyahu, he conveyed his expectations for this process. Getting to this resumption has also taken the courageous leadership of Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Abbas. And I salute both of them for their willingness to make difficult decisions and to advocate within their own countries and with their own leadership teams, countries with the Palestinian territories. I would also like to recognize the important contributions of senior negotiators on both sides, particularly Minister Sipi Libni and Saeb Erekat, both of whom uh, really stood up and stood strong in the face of very tough criticism at home and whose unwavering commitment made uh, the launch of these talks possible. I look forward to beginning work with them tonight. Going forward, it's no secret that this is a difficult process. If it were easy, uh, it would have happened a long time ago. It's no secret, therefore, that many difficult choices lie ahead for the negotiators and for the leaders as we seek reasonable compromises on tough, complicated, emotional, and symbolic issues. I think reasonable compromises has to be a keystone of all of this effort. I know the negotiations are going to be tough, but I also know that the consequences of not trying could be worse. To help the parties navigate the path to peace and to avoid its many pitfalls, we will be very fortunate to have on our team, on a day-to-day -day basis, working with the parties, wherever they are negotiating, a seasoned American diplomat, Ambassador Martin Indyk who has agreed to take on this critical task at this crucial time as the UN, U.S., excuse me, U.S. Special Envoy for Israeli-Palestinian negotiations. Assisting Martin uh, will be, uh, as his deputy and as a senior advisor to me, will be Frank Lowenstein, who has been working with me on this process from the beginning. In his memoir about the peace process, Ambassador Indyk quotes a poem by Samuel Coleridge that begins, if men could learn from history what, what lessons it would teach us. Ambassador Indyk brings to this challenge his deep appreciation for the history of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And from his service under President Clinton, Secretary Christopher, and Secretary Albright, he brings a deep appreciation for the art of U.S. diplomacy in the Middle East. That experience has earned Ambassador Indyk the respect of both sides, and they know that he has made the cause of peace his life mission. He knows what has worked, and he knows what hasn't worked, and he knows how important it is to get this right. Ambassador Indyk is realistic. He understands that Israeli-Palestinian peace will not come easily, and it will not happen overnight. But he also understands that there is now a path forward, and we must follow that path with urgency. He understands that to ensure that lives are not needlessly lost, we have to ensure that opportunities are not needlessly lost. And he shares my belief that if the leaders on both sides continue to show strong leadership, and a willingness to make those tough choices, and a willingness to reasonably compromise, then peace is possible. 
So, Martin, I'm grateful that you've agreed to take a leave uh, from your post at the Brookings Institution to serve once again in this most important role, and I know that uh, you are eager to get to work, as am I. Martin. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, thank you very much for that generous introduction and for vesting in me such important responsibilities. I am deeply honored to serve you and to serve President Obama in your noble endeavor to achieve Israeli-Palestinian peace. The fact that later today, Israeli and Palestinian negotiators will sit down in this building to resume final status negotiations after a three-year hiatus is testament to your extraordinary, tireless efforts, backed by President Obama, to try to resolve this intractable conflict. President Obama made the case so eloquently in his historic speech in Jerusalem in March of this year, when he argued to an audience of young Israelis that, quote, peace is necessary, peace is just, and peace is possible. And you, Mr. Secretary, have proven him right. You've shown that it can be done. I couldn't agree more with President Obama. It's been my conviction for 40 years that peace is possible. Since I experienced the agony of the 1973 Yom Kippur War, as a student in Jerusalem. In those dark days, I witnessed firsthand how one of your predecessors, Henry Kissinger, brokered a ceasefire that ended the war and paved the way for peace between Israel and Egypt. Because of your confidence that it could be done, you took up the challenge when most people thought you were on a mission impossible. And backed by the President, you drove the effort with persistence, patience, and creativity. As a result, today, Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Mahmoud Abbas have made the tough decisions required to come back to the negotiating table. I'm therefore deeply grateful to you and to President Obama for entrusting me with the mission of helping you take this breakthrough and turn it into a full-fledged Israeli-Palestinian peace agreement. It is a daunting and humbling challenge, but one that I cannot desist from. I look forward with great excitement to working with you, President Abbas and Prime Minister Netanyahu and their teams, to do our best to achieve President Obama's vision of two states living side by side in peace and security. I also look forward to working with the team that you are assembling starting with Frank Lowenstein, who, as you said, has made such an important contribution to getting us to this point and who will be my partner in this endeavor. Fifteen years ago, my son, Jacob, who was 13 at the time, designed a screensaver for my computer. It consisted of a simple question that flashed across the screen constantly. Dad, is there peace in the Middle East yet? I guess you could say, Mr. Secretary, that he was one of the original skeptics. <laughs> but behind that skepticism was also a yearning. And for 15 years, I've only been able to answer him, not yet. Perhaps, Mr. Secretary, through your efforts and our support, we may yet be able to tell Jake, and more importantly, all those young Israelis and Palestinians who yearn for a different, better tomorrow, that this time we actually made it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Great statement. Terrific. Thank you very much.